Alrighty, Zai here against the Protoss player uh, Blink on Shakura's Plateau. Not a live game, and there's two two reasons. One, well, I'm going to be giving part of this away, but the new popular one bit, I don't know if it's popular in all leagues or not, but it's been used against me a lot. It's a one base immortal and two stalker drop into just a one base all in with three or four immortals. And I am going to show you how to play against that. Um, my normal banter. I felt like this was a pretty genius one, to be honest. I'm saying MC's a cheater, he doesn't exist. Now I'm actually trying to macro. But anyway, I'm going to give you a double header in which... Ha! <laughs> MC is Miley Cyrus. Yes, yes, he is. She is, actually. It's an ingenious play by Miley. She... Hold on. Um, is that too loud? Options, sound, let's turn that down a little, okay. It's an ingenious play by Miley. She doesn't want people to know she's a professional StarCraft player, so she puts on a Korean suit and plays under the pseudonym MC. Nobody will find any holes in that theory, so just accept as fact. I'm going normally 11 pool opening. And yeah, I one want to show you, I get sidetracked really easily when I do, do these non-live casts. I want to show you how to play properly against this dumb immortal strategy because it's really strong and against zerg protoss can just do it no matter what opening zerg uses because that's how protoss work uh zerg have to adapt to what your opponents do and all that good stuff protoss can just have one one base build and try it every game and it will be fairly successful slash in bitching and the second thing i want to show you is i complain about you know ladder all-stars a lot that do one base all-ins when i've been known to do one base all-ins from time to time especially with terran i'll admit I as Terran, I'm basically a ladder all-star. But as Zerg and Protoss, when I one base all-in, I have reasons behind it. Because they are viable builds. They just... Uh, there's a, a certain way that they're viable builds, I guess. You want to learn how to do them, so that way when Naniwa tries to Nexus first against you, you know the proper one base all-ins to punish him. And that's good solid play. You need to practice that in ladder. But then there's the guys who are ladder all-star one basers with their sick chronos. And 85 energy, he must have a reason for saving that. Maybe I don't know if he does, that's pretty insane. Either way, there's the latter one base all-stars who just, no matter what they're doing, they do the same thing every game. They don't bother trying to learn other builds, trying to learn how to macro better, as this guy shows. They just do the build over and over, and that's so annoying because... Yeah, I guess maybe it helps teach you how to survive against them, but how is that fun? I don't know. Um, he's still not there. Now he's chronoing. So this player, already we're seeing, this player is not good. He's in master. He's got a slightly losing record after 120 or so games. But this is a master level player who can't even chrono to start the game. I don't know if he's got his build so refined that he doesn't have to. I don't know. Um, I pulled three links back. I probably could have poked this more and made him waste a chrono on the gateway. Not that he didn't have enough energy to do so. He's not chronoing warp gates either. Uh... But yeah, he's getting a stalker. If he, they get the sentry first, they force field wall, and you can lose all four of your lings, which is why I pulled back. And I get the ling out of there. Now this is big. As Zerg, you want to scout this. I'm doing my standard opening, so I don't need to show you me. You want to see if he gets a stalker or a sentry. It's not 100%, but if they get a stalker, it means they're either going to apply early pressure, or they're doing this ridiculous robo build. I don't know why they get stalker first when they do the robo build. It just seems like what's hap what happens. If they get sentries, it's much more like they're going to expand and all that good stuff. Now this guy's getting a sentry after a stalker anyway, which is another kind of dumb move. Because he could have been saving up energy, getting energy on the sentry if he reversed the build order. But whatever. Like I said, this guy doesn't seem that great. Now, the other thing with Zerg... I can try and send a timing overlord in, but it's really early in the game and you won't see that much, especially if they build him in a smart spot. He knows that my overlord would have scouted this way first and then come down here, so he should put his tech structures over here. Uh, he's not going to do that. I really doubt he's thinking that far ahead. I doubt I would have. And here comes a warp prism. Another stalker, another sentry, and I feel like a few more gateways will be coming eventually from this build. Over here is I. Let's, uh... Harvesters are even. I'm getting my gases now. I have a hunch this is what he's doing. He's not coming down here to force me out or expo. He also didn't pressure with the stalkers. So I, I'm pretty positive I know what build is coming. Uh, we'll see if that matters or not this game. 
Yeah, I still got my Overlord and my Ling hanging out there. Got both watchtowers. Although you see, good smart move by him not to fly across the map. He skirts around the watchtowers, but you know, he's probably done this build on this map a million times, so what does it matter? I'm up by seven workers. Uh, he's getting his first immortal. I'm getting more drones. I'm getting four spines because at this point I'm like, okay, he's one base all in. And my eco's doing good. I can spine up. I think I got these too early. The timing of... Well, if he's four gating, I would see with my Ling. And although it's not a fully long... Or you can't get the spines in time for the walk. You can get them almost all the way done. So I think I got these a little too early. That's my first mistake. He does this drop. He kills one drone... Just one drone, but I don't really have any units to stop two drones. I don't really have any units to stop this right now, so I'm forced to link up. And that's what this strategy does. Uh, the drop is intended to make the Zerg get a ton of units so that they can't eco up. And I guess it got me off my drones a little bit. I'm not really sure why you want the Zerg to make units, since at this point you probably want them to make drones, because those drones wouldn't have enough time to help the economy. But they do it all the time. So now you see this, you know for 100% certain, well there's no expo, but you still know for 189% certain that the one base immortal all-in is coming. Still got three spines. Spines don't do great against immortals, but if you can focus fire stalkers, uh, spines kill stalkers pretty quick, and if you get four or five spines on the same stalker, you can drop those very fast. So I know he's going more immortals. I've got roaches aren't going to work, lings aren't going to work. Shakuris is stupid because ramp, ramp, just beautiful beautiful spot for uh, sentries to completely dominate if you get creep spread out here you could try and fight them then you don't know I don't know maybe if I got super early creep spread got all my spines out here I could have tried to engage his army seems pretty dangerous though but at least I'd be able to get us around not really sure got some lings so good cannon fodder and lair I can go either meters or hydras I'm not going to beat that immortal army with roach ling Force fields just too strong, and immortals are too strong against roaches. I'm going hydras. Hydras don't take extra damage from immortals. They have very fast attack speed, which is good against immortal shields. The damage is really good against immortal shields. Um, they do obviously very well against stalker zealot sentry. So yeah, I'm busting out hydras. Unlike in the tournament I lost, and I'm not going to forget hydra range. Got some food, but he is moving out. I'm just a little slow on these hydras. Will I have them in time? I don't know. Three spines. I'm moving my spines back because my lings, of course, did see him coming. And here comes his thing. And we are going to see the game-changing engagement. So, like I said, if this guy is just practicing this build and he wants to perfect it or something, okay, whatever. I mean, it's a good build to have for a tournament setting. Although, it's not like you just choose to do it against a Zerg because it counters one of his strats. You just choose to do it because you're bad and you have to rely on this strategy to win. Rallying my units, got my spines, kind of poking away. These two weren't in the best spots. More force fields coming down. Even hydras don't have enough range to shoot them down. And you see where this is going. I am getting massacred. Game timer is almost done. Do I shit talk? Toss are fun. I think I need to turn down my sound just a little bit more. That's uh, pretty loud for some reason. Toss are fun. I am dying. Any more shit talk from Zai? Yeah. And Blink just being stupid. So that's my beef with this build. Y you, It counters, not counters, but it works against any Zerg opening, any Zerg strategy. You can't 10 pool. You can't like triple expand. You can't one base. Like There's just no Zerg strategy that just outright counters this. You don't have to scout. You saw that he, after his initial probe, he didn't care what I was doing the entire game. You don't have to expand, you pretty much don't have to do anything, and it's strong. I knew it was coming, and I still lost to it. What did I do wrong this game? Um, losing two drones to a drop like that, I'm not too concerned about. Got my drones back fairly quick. I got those spines too soon. I played on Shakuras, so that didn't help. Like I said, I maybe could have come out here, but I, I didn't do a ton wrong that game, whereas this guy has 100 fucking chrono the entire game. He started the game out with 100 chrono. That's how bad this guy is. And he still just rolled me with this strategy. So that sucked. On to game. All right, Zai here with game two. I am against Blink again. We pulled these games back to back on the ladder. So what he did to me last game was fresh in my mind. I checked his stats, I had a losing record. I have a losing record right now too. I haven't laddered much this season though. I started out really bad. 
And I was really rusty since I ended last season playing Zerg. So, of course, I have to say he's a disgrace to Miley. He's playing Protoss just like Miley does. And this is just unacceptable. I will punch you in the face, Blink. Better hope you never see me in real life. Even though I won't punch you. I don't... Nobody on the internet has ever made me mad enough to want to go to prison. So, you know, I'm making fun of this one base. Now, this is where the difference between a real player and a ladder all-star comes in. I'm Zerg. He finds out pretty soon I'm Zerg. He hopes I got Zerg again. So, you would think, okay, my strategy worked last game, but now the guy is going to be totally ready for it. I should probably mix up my play. No. Nope, not this guy. Going to do the exact same fucking strategy. Spoiler alert. Burp. And on Shattered, nonetheless. Shattered, one, my base has a much higher... Much more, uh, the expo is way more range. Like, the Hatcher will be here, will fight here. Such a better concave for Zerg. Can't get force fielded out. Can get way more spines lined up. You just want more surface area with Zerg, and this map has it. Two, this is the best Forge Fast Expand map in the game, I think, for Protoss. Nice, solid wall to defend here. Really easy to defend. It's closer to natural, so if they go meters, you can still defend pretty easily. And, most importantly, you get a free third that you just add your gateways there, one or two cannons, and you have a free third that's tucked away in the corner. So even then, it's tough for mutas. Mutas can't come through that way. They can only come through up here. It's just an amazing PvZ map. I hate this map when I'm Zerg against Protoss, because if the Protoss knows how to play Protoss like I do, he will crush you. But... That's not this guy. This guy, textbook ladder all-star. And because of that, I'm going to absolutely punish him. We are going to go to Zyvision. Uh, I don't want to follow. I just want only my vision. Okay. So I'm playing this game. I see what he's doing, getting his stuff again. Actually, real quick, let's uh, check everyone. Still not chronoing, so I don't think it's part of this guy's build. I just think this guy's build is fucking terrible. So back to Zai. I see he's getting a cyber core. I see his ult's coming pretty late. Very late cyber, too. He didn't even build the cyber, right? This guy's macro is just bad. I, Jeez. Ma this Masters players are bad. Me included. But, like, people in Master, we're just bad players. We do stuff like this, and we're just bad. Only, like, Grandmaster and above are good players. Moving on. Uh, I know he doesn't have a cyber core, so I can actually do some damage. I uh, didn't want to do that, though. I didn't want to get that link hit once. I'm a spaz. I could actually do a lot of damage to this gateway. Um, could I... Even Chrono in... Yeah, now he's chopping me. I, I know I can do... There's a chance I could actually kill this gateway, because four links can kill a zealot. But I got one link chopped once, and I don't think it would have been worth it. The zealot could have stalled long enough for the stalker to uh, get in. So I just back off, and I know what he's doing again. I am aware of his build, and this time, more importantly... Ah, I lost a link there. That was stupid. Luck there's only watch one watchtower here to watch. More importantly, I, I rallied drones in the wrong spot. But more importantly, <laughs> I know his timings this time. That's how stupid and much of a jackass this guy is. Not only does he just do the same one base build, he'll do it back-to-back -back games against the same player on a map where it's just not really good to do it. We are close air positions, which is good for his drop. But, yeah, I just don't see the logic or the fun in trying this. Enough bitching though, on with the game. I'm up two harvesters, supply block myself already, because I am bad at this game. There's my overlord. I'm keeping gas coming, I forget why I did that, I think I had a reason. Oh right, I wanted to get a pretty early lair. Hydras didn't work, so this time the, I'm not going to counter that with uh, apparently Lings, Roaches, or Hydras, which is funny because I made a comment earlier saying Hydras were good for defending this. Yeah, I guess not. Um, maybe if I would have had more and they had range, but that just takes a long time. So, because Hydras didn't work out for me, I'm going to go Mutas this game. So I wanted to have the gas for my lair as soon as I switched to 4 gas. Instead of having to wait that little bit of time. Um, I could have pulled out 100 since I do have gas for lair. But yeah, no biggie. And now I'm just droning up hard. I'm not going to scout him. I know what he's doing. I know the timing. So I just want to get as many drones and then I, you want to stop production of drones all together and switch to full units. That's the transition time, I guess. Um, that's how you want to play Zerg. If you train four lings and two drones, your drones are getting less mining time than if you train two drones and then four lings. So you want to get all your drones first if you can. Normally you can't because unscouted, this guy could be like doing a four gate timing and I would just die. But this guy is a fucking idiot, so I know he's not doing that. Throwing up one spine in the back just to prevent the drop off in the back. And I am throwing up, uh, 
Lair? Yep, there's my lair. Getting it at my natural, because I know he's going to drop my main, so I don't want him to know my lair is coming as soon. We're at seven and a half minutes. 46 to 27 workers. Maybe a little greedy, considering I know what he's doing. But he's only got four units, and I think I'm calling it now. No, I got a few more drones. Now I'm switching to Lings. Get in metabolic boost, get in my lair. I will have plenty for Aspire, and here comes a drop. I know it's coming, so what did I do? Have I done it yet? Yeah, I got a third queen. That'll give me two queens to poke at this thing, one to spread creep to. Creep is very big when you're trying to surround toss and stuff. Um, trying to pick off an overlord, not a terrible play there. But, yeah, knowing what he's doing, I got that extra queen so I could get the creep spread. Threw down a spine in the back just to prevent the uh, drop. He changed it up. He did an immortal this time instead of a sentry, which that kind of nullifies that spine. But had he done the sentry like he did last time, I would have been good with that spine. Getting my spire, and now all non... I just need to time it so my minerals and my gas are equal when the spire comes. Throw down five spine crawlers. I want them to be ready when the attack comes. This time I waited... I think the spines came three or four minutes later. Uh, don't die. And go! So, yep, not bad drop microbiome. Looks like one of these guys got hit. He didn't manage to kill it over there, though. But yeah, dropped five spines. I waited much longer this time when I had fully go in economy. And now I see that my minerals is catching up with my gas again. I, there's no point in having excess minerals when the spires are done. So I need to spend some of these minerals. And there we go. I know he's moving out. Come on, Zai. Spend the minerals. There we go. Throwing down three more spines. Trying to get a good concave. That way any unit that comes in will get hit by all the spines at once. Pulling the lings back. Lings you want to engage right after the spines do. They will get force fielded eventually, but that's okay. And here come the mutas. Getting, uh, what, 13 mutas. That's going to be very effective against this. He's got six stalkers and five sentries, which I think with good micro and four, or guardian shields could actually beat the mutas, but not by much. Plus, he is going to lead with the stalkers. You want to lead with the mortals. He led with stalkers, so he lost one of them. Lings are pushing him back. I should probably pull back now. There we go. Pulling back to the spines. And this game is effectively over. Got the meters in time. I knew exactly what his timing was. This is what you get for being a one base jackass. Is the enemy is going to know exactly how to counter you. And that's the difference between a one base all star and someone who's practicing builds. Um, just doing the same build against the same person like this. Like I said, it's so boring. Why? Why do you do that? Learn how to play real. Obviously he needs to work on his macro. There's his 86 energy nexus. And it's not like super late game either. Don't be like Blink. So, big spoiler alert, this game is obviously over. I adapted to my opponent's playstyle and countered him perfectly. He's trying to switch to Stalker, but it doesn't matter because I have Mutas in his base and eventually he's going to be too broke to keep up with me. Doesn't even try and micro out of it. So, yep, now he can just warp in one more round of units and that's all I have to defend to win the game. He's warping in those units here. What does he have? Uh, 11 Stalkers and a Sentry against... I guess I can just go like this. 11 Stalkers in a Sentry against 13 Mutas. A fight I think he would win. I'm not really sure. But I'm training 4 more Mutas. I have Lings to absorb damage. So this game is quite clearly over. Is there going to be shit talking that this game? We only have 20 seconds left for it. Focusing down. To the, well, just an L to P from me. And a good job from him. We play one more time. It's not Zerg on Toss. Do you guys want to see it? That'll make this a really long cast, but... Yeah. Let's do it. Zai here, bringing you one more game with Blink versus Zai. Blink, the bad, bad player that I have played twice now. And I still have to talk shit to him. If you actually scouted, he could have moved out with four units and killed me. And yeah, I mean, last game... I was vulnerable the entire game. I had three Zerglings. That was my defense. And here comes the shit talk continuing. That's why you guys love me. And I think I don't make a Miley Cyrus reference this game. That is bad news. That is definitely hurting my uh, stats right there. So we're going to speed it up a little bit because this video is already going to be pretty long. We have Zy the Protoss against whatever the Protoss. People like to make coin flip jokes for Zerg vs Zerg. I'm sorry, Zerg vs Zerg 
I think it's a very skill based. It's a very it's the most micro based matchup in the game. I think the builds, yeah, there's counters to each other and stuff, but it's the Ling Bane Ling Roach micro that wins and loses games. And then if you make it to the late game, it's who uses their infestors better, like first Mutas or even just first Mass Roach. So I don't know. I feel like Zerg vs Zerg very micro based matchup. There is micro and toss vs toss, obviously, but I feel like toss vs toss is just a massive build order game. You can four gate. If the enemy four gates, you just need to keep force fields at your wall. If you miss one force field, you lose. If you hit all your force fields, you win. It, I don't know. Bad matchup. Don't think the, the expo's fixing it. That's why I can't play Protoss full time. And I hate toss vs Terran. So I hate two of the three toss matchups. But other than that, I like Protoss. Pretty standard openings from both of us. He's getting his two gas. I'm getting my two gas. He's slightly ahead on that gas, but I'm up by like eight. Yeah, so we're tied on gas. Um, I'm getting a Stalker first. I didn't get a Zealot. He did. I saw a Zealot chasing me, so I got a Stalker. Um, I went Stalker first just to get his probe out of there. He ran anyway. And now I'm going to get Sentry because I am going... Only three gate. I don't know if he's going to try and four gate me, but no, he's going one gate robo again, which toss toss, interesting opening. Not getting sentries either, which once again, if I did a four gate timing, he would have just outright lost because of the build order. Well, now he's getting a sentry, but one sentry wouldn't have been enough, especially this late with no energy. I was afraid of him four gating, so I have two sentries. By the time I use two force fields, one of my sentries will have a second force field up. Looks like he's poking out. I'm getting three zealots. And he backs off. So just poking out there, nothing wrong with that. And there's my starport. So it looks like I'm going starport play, he's going Robo Bay play. I feel like that's an advantage for me. I'll slow this get back down to normal. I feel like that's an advantage for me because Immortals can't hit uh, Phoenix. And when you're going Phoenix, you're very Zealot heavy, which Immortals aren't that good against. So uh, yeah, once again, it's a build order thing. I just think in general, Phoenix beats the Robo Bay. If you see Phoenix, you need to switch to Mask Gate Blink Stalker. That's the best way to beat them. And here comes his drop. I saw that drop coming. I forget how. Maybe that first pile on. Not going to pull my probes. Uh, is he focusing? He's not even focusing down. There's one probe. Still not focusing him down much. Two probes down. Three down. Four. And, okay, four probes down. But he lost two sentries, two stalkers, and a warp prism. And he wasn't chronoing probes like me, so, uh... Okay, I'm down six probes. That's not that big of a deal, though, because I lost 200 minerals and mining time that it takes to get four probes. So 64 seconds of mining time, whatever, uh, 68 seconds of mining time. Not a huge deal for me. He lost 300 gas, 550 minerals. And four units, which is huge, because you want that army to add up. So with only two stalkers in his base, I pick up all the probes I can. Workers killed, we're both at five now. So we evened out on workers killed. The big difference is I lost no units to kill his workers. He lost a bunch of units to kill mine. The food count is now 58 to 34. I could have won this game so much sooner. I didn't realize I was this far ahead. But he's still on one gate. He doesn't have that much money. I'm up one worker. And he has to start retraining workers now. I think I am calling it good. Well, I supply block myself. I'm getting one more. Got up. Oh, don't die. Got to lead with the full life phoenix. Don't want to lead with the one that's already weak. Killed one more probe. Not a huge pickup, but you know. 50 mins plus the time it takes to get a new one. And it looks like he's not going to get a new one. So he loses all that mining from that one probe. Not bad, not bad. Units, he has six stalkers. I actually have enough Phoenix just to lift up every one of his stalkers. Again, wasn't really aware that he was that far behind, but I knew I had a probe advantage. I knew I had the harass advantage, so there was no reason to try anything too crazy. He does have an observer, but that won't do much good. One, two, three down. So three more workers killed. This is why I love Phoenix. Way more in robo play. I'm either a fan of phoenixing or four gating. Uh, three gate robo, I just don't like it that much. And even if you try to four gate, I could if I force field it down here in a timely manner. He's not going to have that observer, so he can't see up the hill. You can basically perma force field, and if you have to stop one phoenix or two to get uh, another sentry or two, that's fine. 
And while he's foregating you, he has no defense over here, and you just lift and kill and win. Well, you gotta make sure you get those force fields. One, two, three, three more probes. Probably could have killed four or five there. And I led with that weak phoenix again. Luckily, he didn't lose any more life. But we are up to 12 workers killed to five workers killed. And once again, I'm not losing any army while doing it. He's up to 11 stalkers, but I have 14 zealots, two stalker, three sentry. That could actually put up a fair fight against these guys, although with micro he would win. But uh, you throw in 10 phoenix, and that's not good for him. He's down 29 food, down 8 harvesters. Don't even know if he's funding... Well, he's got 4-gate robo now, but he can't fund that. Got everything clumped up in the middle, finally. Except this one little stalker, so I will take that out. Get away! Stalker down for 8 health of a phoenix. Another good pickup by me. Phoenix, so versatile, so mobile. He needs to do something. He should probably just take his probes and go. But that's just bad news for him, because I can perma force field. He's just in a shitty spot. Phoenix too mobile. This game, uh, not much to watch here, except that Phoenix are better in Robos, and I wanted to show you that I beat the one base, need to learn how to macro and play, douchebag, 2-1. to one. Yes, I'm telling you I won the game. Shocking, if you didn't figure that out, you don't even deserve to watch my cast. I'm up 31 food. Standard toss on toss, no expansions. If the other guy expands, he opens himself to an attack because that's 400 less minerals he has. Derp, toss is cool. They need like specific toss on toss maps that have ramps like this at the natural that can only be played in toss on toss matchups. Because with the ramp at the natural, toss could actually like expand and try other things. But here he comes. Kind of fly through him. Whoops, minor mistake there. Four stalkers getting lifted. That was probably too many. One stalker, two stalkers down for two phoenix. Oh, three phoenix. Bad trade by me. That's going to cost me the game. I'm warping in some uh, stalkers. Not really the best spot for that. And am I chronoing? I have 100 chrono because I didn't have money for it. Lifting up the immortals. Immortals are really good to lift up because Phoenix hit twice, attack fast. And if the immortals are lifted, they're not doing damage. So that's pretty good. And now I'm just lifting everything. I don't care if my Phoenix do damage. I'm just lifting everything so my ground army can win. Uh, they're landing. Gonna just keep lifting them. Maybe not. There we go. So yeah, when you got a ton of Phoenix, you can just lift everything they have and your ground force will be bigger than theirs and you will win the game. So yeah, there's my 2-1 victory over this slot bag. Next time I won't let him even beat me once. And for those people who say I cut off my sentences too soon, 